Hey guys, it's Josh. We're going to be starting Game of Thrones Episode 2, right where Episode 1 left off. I already read the Chapter 1 Moore's description here. You can pause it if you want to reread it, but if not, you can go check out my first video and skip to the end and read it there. Uh, but we're going to start Chapter 1 right now. Moore's Westford. You are Moore's, a ranger in the Night's Watch, a military order charged with protecting and holding the immense wall, separating the realm of the Seven Kingdoms from the wild lands to the north. You are tormented by your past, a veteran and hero of Robert Baratheon's rebellion, which brought an end to the ancient order. You betrayed your lord. You were forced to leave your family and homeland to go to the wall, far from the warmth and love of your wife and daughter. Right, and now I get to pick what kind of combat style I want. I've already read about these on another gameplay video, and I'm not going to go through and read every one, but basically this is the sword and shield fighter, which is quite obvious. He focuses more on defense, sort of like a tank. Uh, this is the hedge knight. He's more of a DPS, I believe, uh, which is focused on two-handed weapons. He wants to do a lot of damage. And this is the dual wielder, which I guess is more also of a DPS character focusing on as many hits as possible, try to draw the attention. Uh, also, he fights like a wildling in that one, which is kind of cool, but I think I'm going to go for the Landed Knight, because playing Demon Souls, I really got used to using sword and shield type combo. Right now, I get to pick my stats. Uh, let's see. I'm going to be playing this game in character, so I'm not going to play throughout the story picking decisions that I would pick as a person. I'm going to pick decisions based on what I think these characters would pick. That way I think it'll be more accurate to what George R. R. Martin intended. The characters in the Game of Thrones series are very brutal and harsh, and a lot of them are out just to help themselves. So I'm going to play as if I know these characters and how they're going to act. So Moore's Westford, even if he was like about to kill a baby, I wouldn't ask myself, would I kill this baby? I asked myself, would Morris kill this baby? And if he would, I'm going to do it. Alright, so let's see what points I want. Definitely want some endurance, since he's going to be a tank type. Uh, not really intelligence. I don't feel like he's that smart of a guy. He's clearly not lucky. I'm going to lower his luck. Clearly not a lucky person if he's at the Night's Watch. Raises endurance all the way. Um, raise strength a bit. And... Maybe agility. Yeah, agility increases hit chance, so I'll raise it a bit more. Uh, I don't want it to be higher than strength. Let's put his luck at one. He's going to be really screwed over. He's not going to dodge much. He's not going to get much bonus loot. And his critical hits are going to be probably never. Uh, but yeah, he's decent intelligence, so that's good. Let's see what stats he gets. Self-defense. Uh, that's an active... Well, no, it's not active. I have to activate it. Uh, and then... What else is there? Day Strike... Or Taunt. Hmm. Interrupt damage. Stun your opponent by slamming your shield into his face. I like that one. Deride all opponents with your rapier wit to incite them to attack you. So that's good for a tank. Uh, I think I'm gonna do that even though he doesn't really have rapier wit. Temporarily increase your damage resistance or damage plus 10% when three or more opponents attack you. That's a good one. Do I have any more? No, I'm out, so I'll keep going. Ooh, I really like maces, especially for physical characters. So I'm gonna make, give him, uh, ooh, maybe warhammers. Oh no, I want him to have a shield, so I'm gonna give him maces. Oh, there are one-handed hammers? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. There we go. 27. Can I lower the other ones? No. Uh, yeah, his armor's not that great, but we'll deal with that another time. Oh, and then here I read that I can pick strengths and weaknesses, but for every strength I have to put a weakness that adds up to it. So that's f plus 4 I need to get minus four, like clumsy and asthmatic. But I don't want those ones, so let me go through and look through this. Sorry, this video is probably just going to be me customizing the character the whole time, but 
We'll see how it goes. Ambidextrous, critical hit chance. Okay, let's go through these in order. I'm not going to read these aloud because it would take too long, but you can go ahead and pause the video at any time. I won't be offended. Definitely gifted. That's the only one I really care about, so let's go ahead and add other things for negative in order to even it out. Or do I even have to? Yeah, I have to give him negatives. Alright. Uh, let lower my attack speed. I'm okay with that. Character creation is finished. Alright, remaining points can be used later on the character page. And let's get started with the Game of Thrones actual storyline. Castle Black. Nothing's changed. The day we arrived. Fifteen years. Remember, Mors? We were so strong back then. At the time, I really believed in the mission of the Night's Watch, you know? You've changed, old brother. I never thought you would betray us. Aye, well, you've always had a knack for choosing friends. One night here, and you'd already bashed in three of our brother's skulls. I wasn't the only one there, if I remember rightly. <laughs> That's me. I never think of the consequences. All I do is give. Look at this, boys. Morse finally brought back that worm, Gorol. Well done. Some men bet against you, but I wagered you'd make it. It must have been quite a hunt. Gorol knows how to cover his tracks and isn't half bad with the sword. I've known you for 15 years, but I still had just a shred of hope that I'd give you and your damn dog the slip. I would have hated getting caught by a little shit like our friend here. Hold your tongue, deserter. That's not what your mother said last night. I'll teach you about respect. Are your mom jokes in this Enough. game? I forbid you to touch him. You would not have had the slightest chance against him, played in hand. Tell me, where is Mormont? The Lord Commander is in front of the Commander's Keep with the new recruits. They've just sworn their oaths. So they are finally sworn brothers of the Night's Watch. Fools. Now you can teach them a little lesson. Right, Moors? Moors, you've brought this traitor back. I knew I could count on you. I did what I had to, Lord Commander. Your modesty does you honor. Recruits, listen to me. Moors here is our best cracker. Now that you are sworn brothers of the Night's Watch, he will mold you into rangers. He has just returned from a very delicate mission. Tracking down Gorals, who took the cowardly route and deserted. In the name of the Night's Watch, I thank you, Moors. I know how hard it must have been for you to hunt down a friend. Oh, one thing I read about this game is that, uh, despite having decision-making, they don't tell you what is the good answer and which is the bad answer. So you actually have to go and think about it rather than just play pure good characters which I don't intend to do like I said earlier I intend to play characters realistically and I would think I would say I this. I swore an oath to the watch 
If we go back on our word and our mission, then we are nothing. If only all my men spoke like that. Speaking of new brothers, I see only four of them. Where is the fifth? Someone attacked him last night. He's been looked after by Maester Eamon as we speak. One of our brothers has broken his vows in the most sordid manner. That traitor then beat the poor boy and left him in the snow more dead than alive. Damn it. I swear I'll skin the culprit alive. Alas, we do not know if the boy will recognize his assailant, or even if he is to survive. Too bad. The brat certainly was a pretty boy, soft as a virgin. What a pity I never managed to corner him. Shut your trap. What more can you do to me? I'm a dead man anyway. Silence! Traitor, each time I pass judgment on a deserter, I feel the bitterness of failure. It is my duty, as Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, to make true brothers of you. This morning, you were strangers. Now, you have all sworn to honor our oath. Some come to us as knights, carrying out their duties, and some as criminals, forced to choose between the noose and the wall. Once you take the black, your past is dead. You must wash away your former loyalties, forget your family and friends. They cease to exist. Such is the strength of our oath. No wife, no children, no lands. All that matters is defending the wall and the realm. We are your only home. We are your duty. We are your new family, the only one that matters now. More than 8,000 years ago, Humanity itself was nearly lost during the long night. Our predecessors then built the wall that you see behind us. This massive wall of ice is 700 feet high and divides the continent in half. It protects the realm of the Seven Kingdoms from threats beyond the wall. Defending it is our purpose, our duty. The Night's Watch has unfailingly carried out this mission for centuries, generation after generation. Wildlings, cold, wind, and dishonor. Those are your enemies, even in the midst of a summer such as this one. We have all taken our vows before the gods, whichever gods they are. If you betray your brothers, if you break this sacred oath, throughout the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros, you will be met with one punishment. Death. Watch closely, you young whelps. May this serve as a lesson to you. Prepare yourself for your final journey, Gorold, my friend. That's all I expect. Well, it's a depressing monologue. Gorald was a brother of the Night's Watch for almost 15 years. But that bears no relevance. He will be executed for desertion. Beyond our mission, we no longer exist. Any last words, deserter? After all my years spent here, I've forgotten what warmth is. The cold has stolen the very memory. Go ahead and smile at the sight of me, the wretched deserter. But you may do the same one day. You won't be able to take it any longer, and you'll do anything just to live again. I tried my luck, and I failed. Come on, Moors. And do it well.
Goodbye, old friend. I'll see you on the other side. You will die in the shadow of the wall. There is no other way. Welcome to the Night's Watch. I'm not sure I want to be at the Night's Watch anymore. Moors. Take Ronit, Poddy, Seltagar, and Patrick and put together a patrol. Make sure they smell a little less like summer before winter comes. Right. Listen. Since I need to teach you to survive at the wall, let's see what you're worth with a blade in your hand. Gather in the exercise yard. Alright, sorry for the exceptionally long video here, but you can finally see I'm walking around, which is nice. Enter the first person camera. Or no, center the camera. Alright, well, so this is a third person game which is pretty nice. I don't really like how the shield's not connected to me. A lot of RPGs do that. It's just a little thing that bugs me. Anyways, sorry about the long video, you guys. I uh, did not realize that the cutscenes were going to be this massive. Uh, I hope you still enjoyed it. I hope you're getting psyched for the next episode. I'll probably have it up tomorrow. Come back for sure, and remember, in the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die.